Dr. Shigang Lee is currently a postdoctoral researcher at the Department of Computer Science ETH Zurich. His research interests include parallel computing, high performance computing, and parallel and distributed deep learning systems. Uh, so thank you, Shigang, for giving your first uh, talk of the the first talk of the day. We are very excited. So please take it away. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for your introduction. So OK, so uh, let's begin. Uh, so I'm Shigani, a postdoc researcher from ETH Zurich. So today I will present uh, Chimera. So Chimera is a novel uh, pipeline parallelism scheme, which is proposed for efficiently training uh, large scale neural network models. So the key idea of Chimera is to reduce the number of bubbles in the pipeline scheme without introduce uh, any staleness in the model. So this work has been accepted by Supercomputing 21. So now let's look at the uh, evolving trend of the modern neural networks. So uh, in 2018, the most popular uh, image classification neural network, ResNet 15, is proposed. It has 25 million parameters. And uh, in around 2018, uh, the first transformer model is proposed. It has more than 200 million parameters. And after that, many transformer-based transformer longer vision models are proposed uh, with rapidly growing model size. Take GPT-3 as an example. It has one, 175 billion parameters. And for switch transformer, it has 1.6 trillion parameters. And uh, recently re uh, released a model called uh, WuDao 2.0. It has 1.75 trillion parameters. So uh, note that the uh, scale of the y-axis is a logarithm scale. If we uh, change it back to linear scale, we can see how large the difference between the model proposed in this year and the model proposed in uh, three years ago. So if we treat the vanilla transformer model as a small toy, so nowadays the transformer model evolves to the to a real optimus. So the model size of these language models increased more than 8,000 times. So what does it mean? So take GPT-3 as an example, uh, which is not yet the largest model currently. It takes 36 years to train on eight GPUs. Uh, which cost more than millions of uh, dollars. So training these monsters is both uh, time consuming and um, also money consuming. So now let's look at how to parallel the training of these large scale models. Before that, let me uh, recap what is deep learning. Uh, so here we have a simple, re uh, forgive me, let me, so here is a simple neural network model which has four layers and uh, there is a objective overall objective function on it f in which w denotes the model parameters and the capital f is the loss function and the c is a data point sampled from the training data set so the training process is essentially to optimize the parameter w to minimize the overall objective function f using some algor uh, optimization algorithm such as SGD. Uh, then how to parallelize this training? So the most popular and simple method is data, parallel, data parallelism. So in data parallelism, each worker maintain a copy of the whole model, and each worker will sample different batches from the training data set. After compute the gradient locally, it will conduct a global synchronization to synchronize the gradients among all the workers using an uh, reduce operation. So the most advantage of uh, data parallelism is easy to implement. However, it may doesn't work for uh, large scale model training simply because the model is too large to fit in the device memory. It also has high RDUs or overhead for large scale models. And the second method is called operator parallelism. So in many references, they call it as model parallelism, but here we prefer to call it operator parallelism to distinguish it from pipeline parallelism, which will be discussed later. 
So in the operator parallelism, the whole model is partitioned uh, vertically and each worker maintain a slice of the model. And uh, before calculate the local portion of the operator, it ha each worker has to gather the re input result from uh, all the other workers. So the advantage of operator parallelism is it, it makes uh, large large scale model training possible feasible because uh, each per worker has only has to maintain a portion uh, a portion of the uh, whole model, but it will uh, incur a collective communication for each operator or each layer, which is a high communication overhead. Uh, the third method is pipeline parallelism, uh, different from operator parallel, uh, parallelism, the model is uh, partitioned in a layerwise way and uh, uh, consecutive layers form a pipeline stage. And uh, uh, each worker is responsible for one pipeline stage. Uh, after the, uh, local, uh, the output of the local pipeline stage is calculated, it will uh, pass the output to the next pipeline stage to progress the pipeline. And the mini batch is partitioned into micro batches to saturate the pipeline. So there are many pros and cons for uh, several pros and cons for pipeline parallelism. So first, it can also make large model training feasible. And uh, furthermore, it do not have uh, uh, collective communication, but only incur point-to-point -point communication between pipeline stages. However, it also have some drawbacks. For example, it has bubbles in the pipeline, which lower the efficiency of this approach. And uh, some asynchronous pipeline approach uh, can completely completely remove the bubbles, but uh, they also lead to uh, lead to staleness in the training. So in this work, Camera aims to reduce the number of bubbles without introducing any staleness in the pipeline scheme. So now let me compare the uh, different schemes of pipeline parallelism. So here in this example, the blue block, uh, the blue block is the computation uh, for the forward pass, and the yellow block is uh, the computation for the backward pass. So note that uh, the workload of backward pass is about two times the workload of forward pass, and the dashed block is the bubbles in the pipeline. We also involve some important symbols to compare the different pipeline schemes, especially for D uh, is the number of pipeline stages, namely the death of the pipeline, and N is the number of micro batches in the training iteration, and M theta is the memory consumption for waste, and M A is the memory consumption for activations. So in this example, uh, we have uh, both D and uh, N equal to four. Namely, we have D, uh, we have four pipeline stages, and uh, we have a total uh, four micro batches in the pipeline. And then we I use a small uh, example to show how does it work uh, for a single batch uh, to training for a, a single micro batch. So in the forward path, the micro batch will go from the first stage to the last stage to compute the loss. And then it will do a backward pass to compute the gradient from the last stage to the first stage. And then uh, let's look at how does pipeline work in GPIP. So in GPIP, in GPIP, uh, it first compute all the forward passes in which the arrows indicate the point-to-point -point communication uh, between pipeline stages. And uh, after that, it will compute uh, all the back backward paths. And after that, it will flush the pipeline. Uh, namely, it will use the gradient to update the, uh, the models in each pipeline stage. So this forms a single training iteration, and this iteration will repeat it until the training finishes. Uh, next, let's look at the memory consumption. Uh, in GPIP, each worker has to maintain a copy of a single pipeline stage. Uh, however, for the activation memory, 
it is proportional to the number of uh, micro batches in the pipeline. So this means uh, in, term of, in terms of uh, uh, memory consumption, GPIP is not scalable to large number of micro batches. Another method is called GMS, which is proposed uh, in IC20. Uh, this approach is mainly proposed to train models with small mini batch. So therefore, there are a lot of bubbles in the pipeline. However, for the uh, memory consumption in GMS, it maintains two model replicas. Uh, and for the activation function, each worker only have to maintain the activation for a single micro batch. This is because as soon as the forward pass of the single batch uh, of a single macro batch is finished, the subsequent backward path will consume the activation result. And the next is the, the dipole pipeline scheme. Uh, it uses the one forward, one backward schedule method. And similar to GPAP, it has the same number of bubbles in the pipeline. However, one advantage of uh, one forward and uh, one backward schedule is that it can bound the memory consumption for activations to D. So this means that uh, dipole is more scalable than GPAP to training on more number of micro batches. So note that all these three approaches are synchronous pipeline uh, approaches, which means that it has the same result as the standard uh, data parallel mini batch SGD, which is already well proved for the convergence. We also have asynchronous pipeline approaches, including uh, PipeDream and PipeDream to BW. Uh, so in this uh, asynchronous pipeline approaches, they do not have bubble problem at all, but they introduce staleness into the training. So uh, although they present some uh, promising result, uh, but the generality of the, this approach are not well proved. Next, uh, let's see the memory consumption for these asynchronous approaches. Uh, for pipe dream, it uses weight stashing, uh, which means that it has a high memory consumption for the weight memory. And in in pipe dream to BW, it maintains two versions of this. And for both these two approaches, it uh, uses one forward and one backward scheduling, which can bound the activation memory to D. And at last, uh, they, we present our work, uh, Chimera. So Chimera is also a synchronous uh, pipeline, uh, pipeline approach. So this means that the Model convergence is already well proved. And compared with uh, all the other synchronous pipeline approaches, Chimera has a significantly less number of bubbles in the pipeline. And uh, for the memory consumption, in Chimera, in the default, uh, default uh, setting of Chimera, it uh, maintains two model replicas. And for the activation memory, it also bound the activation memory consumption to D. And furthermore, we can see the activa activation memory consumption is more balanced on camera among all the workers. And in this table, we we'll compare all the pipeline schemes uh, from in terms of the number of bubbles in the pipeline and the memory consumptions and also the convergence for friendliness. We can see Camera achieves the best balance of all the aspects. Now uh, let's look at how to achieve the pipeline schedule in Camera. So in the default setting, Camera has two model replicas, and in the first model replica, stage zero to stage three uh, are deployed to worker zero to worker three, respectively. However, on the model rec replica one, the pipeline stages are deployed among the workers in a completely reverse order as the first pipeline uh, as as the first model replica. And then, in, in the pipeline, we have 
D micro batches, and for each model replica, it executes half D micro batch. And within each model replica, this half D micro batch is scheduled similar to uh, one F one B for uh, one forward one backward method. And uh, we can see in the first pipeline, the message is transferred from a uh, upper uh, pipeline stage to a lower pipeline stage in the forward passes. And in the second pipeline, the message is, is transferred from a lower pipeline stage to a upper pipeline stage in the forward passes. So therefore, we call these two pipelines uh, down pipeline and up pipeline respectively. More importantly, these two pipelines can be merged together without any uh, conflict. So this basically forms the base basic schedule of uh, Chimera. So in the Greek math, the Chimera is a hybrid uh, creator, which is combined by different animals. So which is analogous to our pipeline approaches here. So therefore we call our approach Chimera. And after considering the back backward workload is about two times uh, as the forward workload, we get a more realistic uh, schedule for the Chimera. Uh, next, next uh, we, I present how to synchronize the gradient among model replicas in Chimera, because by default, uh, Chimera has two model replicas, and the rep replicas for each pipeline stage uh, can be synchronized as soon as the local computation is finished. As shown in this figure, it will synchronize the uh, gradient synchronization on stage two first, and then stage one, and the next stage three, and finally stage zero. However, we can do better than this. We can uh, eagerly trigger the gradient synchronization uh, for a deeper communication and the computation overlap. So the idea here is that uh, we, we use the arrows to indicate the last backward pass in each model replica. So as soon as the last backward pass for each pipeline stage is finished, we can trigger the gradient synchronization immediately after that. So here, take stage three as an example. After the backward pass on mini micro batch three and the micro batch one is finished, we can call gradient synchronization on this uh, uh, stage replica for stage uh, on this replica for stage three immediately. So in this way, we can achieve a deep, deeper overlap for the communication and the computation overhead. Uh, therefore, it helps to reduce the overall runtime for train, training uh, for, for the training iteration. Uh, next, uh, we present how to uh, work with data parallelism in Chimera. So here we present the pipeline schedule uh, for Chimera on four workers. But how about scale? How to scale to more number of workers? Uh, in this example, we show how to scale it to uh, from four workers to eight workers using data parallelism. So the basic idea is to rep duplicate the whole pipeline schemes uh, to more number of workers and uh, with different uh, input micro batch sets, micro batches. And in this example, and then mm -hmm. the gradient. Yeah. Sorry. So, any questions? Any questions? Yes, finished everything. Okay, okay, sorry. So I sorry, hear some. Sorry, yes. Some, yeah. Okay. And then the gradient synchronization uh, is uh, conducted on the re model replicas on each pipeline stage. Uh, here, the pipeline schemes is uh, duplicated by two times. We call it as the width of the pipeline, namely the width equal to two in this example. Uh, next, we discuss how to scale Chimera to more number of micro batches. 
So previously, in also example, we show Chimera with D number of micro batches, but how about we have more than D micro batch? So in this example, we have 2D micro batch. The basic idea is uh, to treat the, the pipeline schedule of D micro batches as a basic schedule unit, and then combine this basic unit together. Then how to concatenate this basic unit? Uh, the simple method is to di directly concatenate these basic units. However, because the uh, uneven workload between the backward pass and the forward pass, uh, it will inc incur intermediate bubbles at the uh, joint of the concatenation. And uh, also these intermediate bubbles increases as the number of uh, basic units. So this is bad, we do not want this uh, intermediate bu bubbles. Next, uh, we propose another method uh, called forward doubling to remove these intermediate bubbles. So the idea here is that uh, we double the workload of the forward pass to make it even with the workload of the backward pass. Then we can combine this uh, basic unit together without any uh, without any intermediate bubbles. However, this because we double the workload of, of the forward pass, it also incur two times activation memory overhead. So it may trigger out of memory error, uh, which may rely on activation recomputation to get rid of uh, out of memory. We have another method called uh, backer, backward halving. So uh, in backward halving, it uses a similar method as uh, forward doubling. Namely, we try to make the workload of uh, forward pass and backward pass even. Uh, but uh, rather than doubling the workload in the forward pass, we halving the workload in the backward pass. And then these two basic units can be combined together without any intermediate bubbles. Uh, however, this method uh, have to half the micro batch size, which may uh, underutilize the, uh, the compute resources. So um, for all these three methods, which one is the best is not a priori. So we refer to a empirical result to select the best approach. And next we present how to general, generalize uh, Chimera to combine more than two pipelines to, to, to combine more than two pipelines together. So in all the previous examples, we only have two pipelines combined together in Chimera. But uh, here in this example, we show that uh, it can combine four pipelines uh, together for uh, an eight-stage pipeline. So these four pipelines can be combined together without any conflict, which forms the pipeline schedule uh, for combination of four pipelines in Chimera. It also has four model replicas here. So we can see using more pipelines uh, the number of bubbles is further reduced. So we can prove that uh, if the number of stage D is an even, even value, uh, Chimera can be generalized to combine from one to D uh, pipelines together. So for more details, please uh, refer to the paper. So as the number of model replicas, namely the number of pipelines increase, uh, the number of bubbles decrease. However, the memory consumption for waste uh, and also the corresponding gradient synchronization overhead increase. So empirically, uh, we set Chimera uh, with a combination of uh, two pipelines, uh, pipelines to uh, achieve the best performance. Next, uh, we present how to uh, build performance model to help uh, select the best configuration of the death and the voice of the pipeline stage. So here in this example, 
they first uh, identify the critical paths in the pipeline schedule of a single training iteration. And then we count the number of forward passes in the critical path and the number of backward passes in the critical path. And then the runtime of the critical path is modeled as uh, the, all, uh, the total overhead of the computation and the point-to-point -point communication overhead of all the forward paths and uh, all the backward passes in the critical path. And next, we we'll consider the communication overhead for gradient synchronization. So because we focus on large-scale models, uh, we suppose uh, the Oridus use ribbon siphoner algorithm, uh, which is opt optimal in terms of the bandwidth term. Then we indicate the three regions which can be utilized to overlap the Oridus communication. And the portion of Oridus communication overhead which cannot be overlapped uh, eventually contribute to the uh, overall runtime of uh, the training iteration. And finally, the runtime of training iteration is modeled as this formula. Uh, then for a given number of workers, uh, we enumerate all the configurations of D and W and uh, select the one, the configuration with the best performance predicted by the model. Uh, next, we evaluate the performance uh, of a camera on PCDent supercomputer. Uh, on PCDent, each computer node contains uh, an Intel's own CPU and one uh, NVIDIA P100 GPU, and the computer nodes are connected by Korea Area's interconnected network. We compare camera with all the pipelines games discussed previously, including GPIP, uh, GEMS, Depot, PipeDream and PipeDream 2BW. And all the schemes are implemented in PyTorch with Glue as the distributed backend. We cannot use uh, Nico as the ba distributed backend here because uh, Nico doesn't support point, -to point communication in PyTorch. And uh, use uh, Nico for audios and Glue for point-to-point -point communication at the same time also doesn't work, which is also observed in the work of PipeDream. So here uh, we use the transformer-based language models, including BERT and GPT-2 for evaluation. So during the performance uh, comparison, we also involve some important symbols here. Uh, recall that D is the number of pipeline stages, and Y is the number of replicated pipelines, and B is the micro batch size, and B height is the mini batch size, and R indicates that uh, activation recomputation is required to get rid of out of memory. First, let's look at the uh, memory consumption result for a GPT, GPT-2 model, and here, we list the um, memory consumption analysis in this table to better understand the result uh, in the figure. For, ca for camera, we can see the memory consumption is more balanced among the workers. And for Depot, it has a similar maximum memory consumption as a camera. However, uh, the memory consumption among all the workers are distributed in a wide range. And in GEMS, it has the lowest memory consumption, but this is at a cost of many bubbles in the pipeline. And in GPIP, uh, because the activation memory is proportional to the number of uh, micro batches, it cannot scale to large mini batch. Therefore, it triggers out of memory in all three configuration. And uh, in PipeDream, it uses um, weight stashing, which also has a very high memory consumption. Therefore, it also trigger out of memory in all these three configurations. Uh, for PipeDream 2BW, it has a similar memory consumption as uh, Depot. 
except for the last uh, configuration, which trigger out of memory. This is because first uh, in Pepstream 2BW, it have to maintain two version of ways, and also the memory consumption is not balanced in Pepstream 2BW. And also we have a similar result on BERT for the memory consumption result. Uh, next, we present the performance tuning for all the baselines uh, because the parameter of D, W, and B uh, affect the performance significantly. So here, we would like to select the best configuration for each baseline and then compare it with the chimera. So we can see for each baseline, there is a large tuning space and uh, eventually we select the configuration with the highest training throughput. Similarly, uh, we do the performance tuning for all the baselines uh, also on GPT-2. Uh, next, let's look at the performance modeling for uh, Chimera. Recall that the training, the runtime of a training iteration is modeled as this formula. And uh, the experimental result on um, GPT-2 and BERT shows that the training throughput predicted by this model has less than 10% error compared with the real training throughput. So this means that we can use this model to approximately predict the best configuration in Chimera. Then we present the weak scaling result for GPT-2 uh, 500 GPUs to 2000 GPU nodes. And all the baselines and also Chimera, we present the best performance. We can see Chimera outperforms all the baselines, uh, especially on 2000 GPUs. It achieves about 1.4 times speed up uh, to 2.3 times speed up over the synchronous approaches. So this is because first, in, in Chimera, we have less number of bubbles, and uh, also we have more balanced memory consumption, and thus there is the activation recomputation is uh, no longer required here in this configuration. And uh, for the asynchronous approaches, Chimera uh, slightly outperform uh, Pepstream 2BW. Again, this is because uh, in Chimera, we have uh, more balanced memory consumption and uh, no require for uh, activation recomputation in this configuration. And uh, compared with the uh, Dream, Chimera significantly outperform uh, Pep Dream in terms in terms of training throughput. This is because in Pep Dream, it trigger a uh, gradient synchronization after each. Uh, Shigang, you are mute. Can you please unmute yourself? Sorry. So yeah, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, sorry. Um, problem is click. No, we all heard we the VIX scaling, so you can start from here. Yep. Okay, so for the weak scaling, for the weak scaling result, uh, we especially on 2000 GPUs, Chimera uh, outperforms uh, the synchronous pipeline approach significantly. This is because first, Chimera has less number of bubbles in the pipeline, and uh, uh, second, it has more balanced memory consumption, and uh, activation recomputation is no longer required in this configuration. And uh, compared with the asynchronous approaches, uh, for uh, Chimera slightly outperformed Pipedream 2BW. Uh, this is because, again, Chimera has a more balanced memory consumption and uh, no activation recomputation is required. And uh, compared with Pipedream, it has significantly increased the training throughput. So this is because in Pipedream, it triggers a gradient synchronization after each uh, backward pass. 
So this means that it has a high overhead for or reduced communication. And we have a similar result for weak scaling on BERT. And next, we present the result when scaling to large number of micro batches for camera. And uh, we, this is the result for BERT. We can see among all the three approaches, uh, including direct concatenation and uh, forward doubling and backward halving, the direct, the direct concatenation achieves the best performance uh, in, in this configuration for BERT. However, it is still uh, a little lower than the pipedream 2BW. This is because the direct concatenation incurs some intermediate bubbles as discussed previously. However, pipedream 2BW do not have any bubble uh, in the pipeline, but it introduces staleness into the training. And uh, uh, when scaling to large number of micro batches for uh, GPT-2, we have a slightly different result here. So among all the approaches, Chimera with, uh, with forward doubling achieves the best performance. And it also achieves higher throughput than Pipedream 2BW here. So this can be explained by the uh, difference in the pipeline schedules of Chimera with uh, forward doubling and Pipedream 2BW. So here is the pipeline schedule for Chimera with forward doubling. Uh, we can see the point-to-point -point communication between pipeline stage can be overlapped by the intermediate calculation on the uh, forward passes. However, in Pipedream 2BW, it uses 1F1B uh, schedule method. There is uh, almost no space to overlap this point-to-point -point communication. So overall, the camera with uh, forward doubling has more space to overlap P2P communication. Uh, therefore, it performs better. And uh, at last, we show the result for camera with more than two pipelines combined together. So as the number of pipelines increase, the performance of camera increases first and then decreases. This happens on both of these two configurations. So this result can be explained by the trade-off between the number of bubbles and the, the communication overhead for gradient synchronization. So here, as the number of pipelines increase, the number of bubbles in decreases. However, the memory consumption for this and also the corresponding gradient synchronization overhead increases. When there is a, only a single pipeline in camera, it's similar to the traditional synchro synchronous pipeline approach, such as uh, Dipole and uh, GPIP, which suffer from the bubble problem. If we increase the number of pipelines to D, there is no bubble at all, which is uh, equivalent to the traditional data parallelism, but this uh, will suffer from high gradient synchronization overhead. So in Chimera, it selects to use two pipelines to combine together by default to achieve the best performance. So we are preparing to release our work on GitHub. So at last, I conclude this work. So first, uh, I present the evolving trend on the modern neural networks, and then I uh, compare the different approaches for uh, distributed training, especially for different pipeline schemes. And then we, uh, I present the uh, pipeline schedule of Chimera and discuss how to scale Chimera to more number of micro batches and how to generalize it to combine more than two pipelines together. And next, uh, we um, discuss the performance modeling in, in Chimera, which helps to select the best configuration of the DAS and the WAS of the pipeline. 
And finally, we evaluated the performance on the supercomputer, and the result shows that Chimera significantly outperformed the uh, synchronous pipeline approaches, uh, which is mainly because less bubbles in the pipeline. Compared with the state-of-the-art asynchronous pipeline stage, uh, Chimera is on par in terms of training throughput, but it doesn't re uh, introduce any staleness in the training. So for the future work, we will study how Chimera uh, with, work with memory saving techniques such as Zero, and uh, how does it work with sparse training. So this is all the content for my presentation. Uh, any questions? Thank you very much, Shigang. That's a great talk. Very encouraging results. Um, I don't see any questions on the chat window. I have a couple. So uh, first question is that, uh, so what what is the notion on uh, convergence? Because you know you show the throughput results, which are which looks very good. Then how is the convergence runs going? Do you see? So uh, yeah, we, we we do not run uh, so full training for the BERT or GPT two model. We only run it uh, uh, with a limited number of training iterations to see the. How does it converge? So eventually, uh, we found that the uh, on on these big language models, there is uh, almost no difference between the synchronous and the asynchronous approach in terms of the uh, the convergence speed. Uh, ho uh, however, uh, I don't know uh, how about the other tasks. Uh, maybe the Asynchronous approach may not work uh, go as good as uh, as the language language models on other tasks. But uh, yeah, we do not do more experiments on the convergence result. Okay. Yeah, I highly encourage that because that's the proof of the pudding, right? So that's mm -hmm. very good. And just uh, I'd like to know more about that. Why the nickel point to point didn't work out for you? So. Uh, I can take it offline. So Fanny has a question. Let me unmute her. Um, Fanny, can you yep. hear me? go for it. Yep, we can okay. hear you. Thank you. Uh, great presentation, Shingan. It was very nice to hear about all these scheduling policies and Chimera. I have kind of a follow up to the question that Kushal did in terms of batch size. So the way that I'm understanding Chimera, one of the dimensions is the batch size. So if the batch size changed, then potentially the scheduling and the benefits of the bubble reduction will be affected. But batch mm -hmm. size is also a hyperparameter which will affect convergence at the end. So how is that being still in Chimera, right? How do you take into account the batch size effect on convergence? Yeah, so um, basically we, we know that there is always a threshold for the mini batch size. Uh, uh, existing which will affect, will jeopardize the convergence quality. So what we do is simply to uh, use the maximum uh, mini batch size, uh, which is uh, demonstrated uh, su su successfully uh, in the data parallelism approach. And then we use the same, uh, we use the same um, largest mini batch size in Chimera and also in all the other pipeline uh, approaches in the evaluation. And then we further partition this uh, mini batch size, the maximum mini batch size into uh, macro batches and then use these macro batches to saturate the pipeline. So we do not have uh, any theoretical evidence, but uh, we only refer to success, successful empirical result from the existing work, uh, mainly from the machine learning community. community. Makes sense. Thank you. 